Guys, welcome to the podcast. We've got an interesting um, topic today. Uh, I don't know if you can uh, check this out. It's May 12th. Um, check out what's been going on in the market, specifically with uh, the stock market and crypto. Crypto is very interesting because it's kind of in the middle of a, a so-called crash right now. And, and I, I just find this fascinating because of all markets, uh, whether it's real estate or it's the crypto market or it's um, the gold market, bond market, real estate market, again, um, there's so much psychology that's involved in this. We don't want to believe what's true. We have this uh, optimism bias that's going on. And that's really, really troublesome for investors. You can see what's happening in the crypto market. Uh, and and uh, it's it's a shame, uh, but I think um, if if you've heard me talk about the crypto, it needed that crash. It's going to crash, and then I think it's time to to move in because uh, you know I think that the the idea of of a um, crash is one that is uh, really really. Um, interesting if you're from the outside looking in, but if you're in and you're trying to exactly judge when to get out, you're going to have an issue. And that's what a lot of people are experiencing right now. But we're not a crypto company. Pri primarily, we do investing and I've done a little bit of that, but we're real estate, business, entrepreneur. Let's talk about that. In particular, let's talk about apartment buildings because that market is getting affected too. If you listen to my podcast a few weeks ago, I was talking about the real estate market and that it's going to crash. If you see what's going on right now, it's crashing. I, I kind of coined that particular podcast. Uh, this is your Lehman Brothers moment, because if you think back at Lehman Brothers in the March of 2008, you, it was a defining moment. Well, this particular market change is going to feel more like a frog in the pot. We talked about that during the podcast. You want to go back and watch that for sure. But I, I get, because I talk about it a lot, I get so many people asking me uh, what's going on with the apartment market and how do I think that is going to fare in uh, with everything that's going on now. So I've got some bird's eye, 3,000 foot views that I think I want to share with you guys. And I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, just like I talked about, uh, you know, on the real estate side, that was your Lehman Brothers moment. This is your Lehman Brothers moment with apartment buildings. If you can choose not to listen to me. I've been doing this for 20 some years, but uh, I would think that you would bode well in listening to this uh, suggestion from a guy that's been around this business for a long, long time. I've been kind of on the sidelines from buying anything in real estate in general the last couple of years because the market has just been insane. Too, it can't. It's unsustainable. I felt like that because of my experience I also felt like that because of my experience in the apartment market. And I know I get a lot of people that are it's like, John, why? how could you tell people not to buy apartments? Hey, there's deals out there that you should look at and you, you probably could and should buy right now because of the scenario of where the net operating income is. And you could get that at a higher cap rate compared to the cap rate of the market. But that is not the norm. And I just want to ex ex uh, say that again and highlight that. That is not the norm. And you have to be a disciplined investor. I'm getting excited because of what's coming. And I know that these markets haven't been sustainable. If you feel like they are and you've bought a bunch of stuff in the last 24 months or you've refied stuff in the last 24 months, I would ask you to take a little bit of caution here because the market's changing. You see it right now. And uh, you see it right now on the real estate side. We called that. Uh, that happened. And now I'm calling for this stuff to happen on the apartment side. Now, again, this is broad picture in general. Real estate markets are location specific a lot of times. And number two, I'm not saying there's not good deals out there. I'm saying that the majority of the properties that were bought uh, were FOMO, fear of missing out. Just letting you know that that's what it is. And uh, we're also working on some false pretenses of demand. Go back and watch that, that webinar or the webinar. Go back and watch that podcast. I'm telling you, it's, it was your Lehman Brothers moment with regard to single family. <clears throat>
A good last thing I'll say, and I'll get into this. A good real estate investor will learn how to make money on the way up and make money on the way down. A great real estate investor will understand when uh, that is happening and when to lay off and what action to take in both of those markets. That's the difference between a good real estate investor and a bad, uh, a great real estate investor. A bad real estate investor is someone that just never gets involved, whether it's up or down. And I don't think that's you guys. If you've been with me for a while, you know that is not the case. So apartments, multifamily, let's talk about this. Um, I have predictions. I'm going to come right out to it. Now, normally I would save this as a cliffhanger, but I'm not going to do that here. Um, and there's two kinds of rents that I'm considerate of when I'm looking at multifamily. It's asking rents and actual rents. Asking rents are rents for a vacant unit when you have tenants coming in. Actual rents are rents that are being brought in by an occupied unit. And that occupied unit, at some point, their lease is going to expire and you're going to have an asking rent for an occupied unit, not a vacant unit, but an occupied unit. And so I'm looking at actual rents and I'm looking at asking rents and I'm starting to see a slowdown. And there's several reasons for that. I'll leave that for debate. I'll give you a couple of my thoughts with that. But there's a lot of things, a lot of uh, plays in the mix here. One is COVID. Another one is stimulus. And another one is inflation. Another one is the labor pool. Uh, uh, and another one is the overall economy and interest rates. Uh, so that's five. Um, and I really, really want you to take those into consideration here. The demand for apartment buildings overall, I think, is going to remain fairly strong because we do have a supply and demand problem uh, to an extent. Some of that, though, has been exploited in the wrong way, and it's been exploited to move properties. It's been exploited to uh, get people to buy properties, and it certainly has been exploited um, by the media in, in causing this frantic worry about uh, housing and rentals. And I think that it also has happened on the single family house side of the world. So this market is slowing. Uh, you see it in the rents. What does that mean? Well, the reason the market was energized anyway, the energy that came into that market was COVID, the working from home, not going to work, and people double dipping on jobs because the workforce and labor pool was ridiculously low. Um, number two, uh, the stimulus. I cannot say this enough. This has very little to do with Russia. This has very little to do with other geopolitical events. The sooner we start talking in this mode, the sooner that we'll get out of this phase. If we talk about the fact that inflation has to do with Russia, we're done. It's over. If somebody else controls that, it's over for us in the United States. I'll say that again, and I might have some people a little bit... Um, uh, upset with me here, but I'm telling you, inflation here in this country has very little. I'm not saying it has nothing to do, but very little to do with the Russian Ukraine conflict. It has a lot to do with printing 25% of the money that we've ever had in the history of this country. This is not a left problem. This is not a right problem. This is a we all problem. Uh, so stop the political dividing lines, red, blue, left, right. I'm purple, as you heard uh, a couple of podcasts uh, ago. We need to take action on this and we need to accept the responsibility on this or we're done. I will say that again, or we're done. We need to stop printing money. We need to stop giving money away on both sides of the aisle. We need to be responsible on how we're spending that money when we do and we really need to start thinking about how we um, uh, change some things. We change schooling. We change the, uh, what we're spending our money on. We change what our monetary policy is, so on and so forth. That, my friends, is another um, podcast. I'll leave that. Let's get back to the multifamily, though. Inflation, it's here. This is what it feels like. This is what inflation feels like. Gas is more expensive. Um, Groceries are more expensive. Uh, the items to build a house or an apartment building are more expensive. Guess what? Interest rates are more expensive and they're growing uh, and, and going up exponentially. If you know the mortgage market, you uh, talk to a residential mortgage 
broker. Talk to them. See how their business has slowed over the last uh, couple months significantly. Uh, it's a big deal. So raising of interest rates are here. Look at the 10-year treasury. If you want to understand how healthy the real estate economy is, the economy in the United States in general, do not look at the stock market. That is really not the best predictor. Look at bonds. The reason that bonds are going up is because the people that are buying those bonds feel that buying those bonds may be a higher risk. We need to incentivize them to buy those bonds. Therefore, we increase the yield. We increase the return that they're getting on that bond. A bond is a promise to pay. When that happens, you know that things like the US dollar and the US economy are having some challenges. And we are. This, again, has everything to do with our monetary policy, the Fed coming in a little bit late and battling this inflation um, a lot late probably is the best answer for that. And it also has to do with our, as Americans, again, again, not left or right, not red or blue, but us as Americans having this debt desire. I mean, we almost glamorize it, right? Just like we glamorize the fact that people don't need college education. Ridiculous. College education is absolutely needed. Now, do we need to change some things with that? For sure. For sure. But please, man, stop this nonsense. What's going on with social media. And when I'm on stage with other people talking, I hear people say, you know, college education is ridiculous. You don't need it. And I disagree a little bit with, with uh, Elon Musk. I'm an Elon Musk fan, but I do disagree with him here. I believe that education, no matter what phase we're going to with technology, is going to be needed. You need to have that type of scenario, whether it comes from AI, artificial intelligence, or augmented reality, AR, or um, uh, anything else, uh, you need to be educated on what to do and how to use it and how to react. Just my personal opinion there. I think we've really taken this for granted, uh, how important education is. Now, does it need to change? For sure, it needs to change. The monetary policy of college education needs to change, and the, the things that are taught in school needs to change uh, for sure. We are going to do something upcoming with that. But back to this inflation. We have higher rates. They're here for a while. I don't know how long, but they're here for a while. They're going to affect not only uh, the real estate market in general, but specifically, they're going to be affecting apartment buildings. And uh, you know what else is increasing with real estate? taxes and insurance. So I know the apartment market is in store for a hit. They're in store for higher operational costs through taxes, insurance, and maintenance because the labor supply, sorry, the labor pool uh, expenses is, have gone up. And so have materials in that market. They've gone up. And so you're going to be paying more uh, to fix those. Now, the biggest hit that is going to be taken with regard to that is uh, B minus assets and below. If you work on a scale of ABC, it's B minus to C minus. If you work on a scale of ABCD with respect to your asset classes and multifamily, it's B minus all of C and all of D for sure. Uh, so keep that in mind. We're going to go into that in a second. Higher costs of items do not stop at the apartment owner, however, the landlord, the owner, the operator. It really starts at the tenant base. The last couple of years, the tenant has had more disposable income. They've had more discretionary income. And that's due to a couple of things. There's so many, this story has gone undetected. There's so many tenants that have been double dipping with work because they work from home. They've increased their income because of that. The stimulus plan is also put, whether it be unemployment or whether it be PPP or EIDL or any of the other stimulus plans that have come out have given that the consumer, i.e. the renter, more money to work with. This is now going away. This is disintegrating in our eyes. So what is going to happen with the fact that that consumer, that renter is now going to have less money to work with and their costs are going up? Interest rates are going up. That affects credit cards. That affects car notes. Gas prices are going up. That affects discretionary income. Uh, that affects you know the income that they can have to pay higher rents. 
The other thing that's going up is groceries. Feeding someone's family is going to take priority over rents. I'm sorry, you're going to start to see this on the lower tier assets. Class D, Class C, getting into the B minus. It's going to affect everyone, but you're going to see it in those asset classes first. So that is, is where you'll start to see this bleed in. We're starting to see this now with statistics. If you go to the um, uh, National Apartment Association or you go to the Property Management Association nationally, or you look at some of the stats that are coming in with apartment buildings that are on the market in inventory, you're starting to see this happen. Again, do not have optimism bias with this because you bought a property in the last couple of years. Do not have optimism bias with this because you're in the apartment market. And although things might be a little challenging, they're okay. I'm telling you, be ready for this. If it doesn't happen and I'm completely wrong, at least you'll be prepared. And I want all of our listeners on this podcast to kind of take that approach because we don't have a crystal ball. We certainly don't know what's happening, but if trends continue the way they are now, be ready because there is going to be a major change in commercial real estate, not only in office buildings, that's already happening, not only in retail because that's already happening. The superstar of the commercial real estate side and sector has been two things. Number one, storage units, but more importantly, has in mobile home parks, story, three things, storage units, mobile home parks, and apartment buildings, multifamily. It's been the superstar. Banks have lent more on it because their monetary policies have been loose. That's tightening right now. And uh, people have bought properties that have been extremely low cap rates. And I'm telling you, that can't last. And that is going to change. Net operating incomes are going down without forced appreciation. Just talking naturally here. Natural appreciation is going to make net, uh, net operating income go down. Cap rates are going the other way. They're not compressing. They're going up. So that means apartment valuation naturally, not forced appreciation, natural appreciation is, is trending where it was going up. It's, it's peaking and now it's starting to go the other way. So that's what I want you to be ready for. Those assets that I mentioned before, B minus and below, are going to become more management intensive. If you do not have a good management plan in, in uh, May of 2022, you need to get one because this market is changing. And if you've got bad management, you're only going to add injury to insult. My advice is to make sure that you've got good quality management with a plan to fight off some of these things that I'm talking about. Because that tenant base that you have, while may have been consistent in 2020, may have been a little more consistent and paid a higher rent in 2021. That may not be the case here in 2022. Again, this is your Lehman Brothers moment. I suggest that you really, really plan for that. It's going to be real important that you do. Um, new apartment inventory. Everybody talks about supply and demand, and I understand that, and I and I uh, know that we have a supply and demand problem. That lesson, if you've heard me talk about this, that lesson is really exemplified in the book uh, "The Wealth of Nations" by Adam, Adam Smith. He wrote this in the late 1700s, and I can tell you for sure he talked about supply and demand in the book. Read it at least three times. Uh, I'm going to read it again. It's on my summer reading list. And really, the interesting thing to talk about with supply and demand is even when demand outpaces supply, the key word in, in, in keeping that momentum going for demand is the ability to pay. I believe the tenant base in the United States is losing that ability to pay higher rents. I've been in this business so long that I remember when they had a hard time filling units, we had more inventory than demand. We had yet red and yellow signs on buildings and complexes that said free rent. There, the, the ownership operators and management at that point were willing to give away free rent in terms of signing a, a lease, a six-month lease, a 12-month lease. We don't have that problem today, but I can tell you that cycles always work like this. If you feel like the market's always going to stay like this, you're not planning properly and you're going to be in trouble. Again, I get this feedback. I get this 
feedback from apartment owners and they have this optimism bias, the idea that because they're involved in a situation and, and they think positively about it into the future, it'll always stay that way or and or that because they have so much time in front of them, they're a little bit younger, uh, they, they know that they're not being impacted by that negativity now. So they, don't, they put that down the road. Again, that's what we've done in this country with our monetary policy. Again, that's what we've done with national programs in this country like Medicare and um, uh, Social Security, to name a few, Medicaid maybe even as well. So all of those things fall into this optimism bias. Forget that. As an investor, you've got to prepare what's happening. If it doesn't happen, you're prepared. If it does happen, you're prepared. If you keep this optimism bias, you're going to be in trouble. I'm telling you right now, this is the Lehman Brothers moment. Please take this podcast seriously. No, usually I'm not this serious on these podcasts. I'm having a little more fun, but today is really a, a caring moment for you guys. Be ready for that tenant base and the ability to pay to change. It's already changing. So again, I would encourage everyone to take heed to what I am saying here. So this new inventory, there's 800 new units in 2022 and 2023, 800,000 new apartment units being built. A little bit of these were delayed for supply chain challenges. We still have those folks, uh, but they are coming on the market. Another reason I feel you need to get ahead of this problem is because the market is going to be flood, flooded with inventory, which a little bit is needed. But those that tenant base is not going to have the same ability to pay those higher rents that you may have bought your last property at. And they're not going to have the ability to pay the uh, rents that you've raised to. So you may have to negotiate or renegotiate with those, those tenants. This is going to affect a lot of things. It's going to affect NOI on a property. It's going to affect debt service on a property. Uh, it's going to affect refinancing. And it's also going to affect what a strategy is for a commercial apartment building. Again, take heed. This is a very serious moment for apartment buildings. And I feel like this, this is, uh, I forget how far we in, uh, we're in here on the podcast, but this is where, oper guys, I'm so excited for this change for multifamily. I've been kind of waiting on the sidelines. This is where we make our money. This is where a lot of investors, savvy investors make their money because we can help more people out. We can help bring a solution to more people with uh, problems. This is on the single family house side as well. People are like, why are you so happy about this market going down? Because this is where we thrive as good investors. I would encourage everyone to get with a team, uh, surround yourself with people that know what they're doing, surround yourself with educators or a good mentor and, and really get ready to go. If, if you bought properties in the last couple of years, I hope they're good deals and they're going to weather this storm. I hope nothing but good. But what I do know is the real opportunity is coming and uh, I want to be ready for that as well. Uh, so this inventory that's coming, I think it's going to help out the demand. But again, this is where when those apartment units hit the market, be ready for the ability thing from the tenant base and also be ready when that uh, apartment demand and supply kind of get a little bit more to an equilibrium, you're going to see pricing change. That's going to affect a lot of things. So the last one uh, that I wanted to mention in these four things. So I talked about inflation. I talked about the new in apartment inventory. I talked about rents. I talked about what's causing all of this. But I do want to send another message out and really kind of relay to uh, everyone that's listening to this. You're either a business owner, a real estate investor, uh, uh, someone that is um, um, uh, living life. So that includes pretty much everybody on the planet. That's cool. Uh, so I wanted to uh, say this to you, and that is this. Uh, investors, number one, value add props are in cautious focus. What does that mean? Cautious focus. That means that we are in, uh, we're looking at value adds, but I'm I'm adding again that this is a cautious focus. I'm getting so excited, I'm throwing my pen. A cautious focus because of the items above, the supply chain challenges, the increased 
cost of materials, the increased taxes, the increased insurance, all of the other stuff, gas, groceries, everything. Make sure that you are going over your budget for value add. This is a a disaster. This is a disaster waiting to happen going into the market that we're going. If you've got a property and it's value add and you're going to drive that NOI by making improvements to the property, this is where, my friends, you can escape disaster by doing uh, certain things. Number one, lock a long-term rate on your loan with a low or minimal down, uh, sorry, uh, uh, prepayment penalty, okay, or defeasance fee. Do that right now. Number two, um, make sure you've got capital set aside. If you do not have capital set aside and you just squeezed into a multifamily, and I'm, and I'm, this is, this is really kind of my, uh, shoot, how do I say? This is kind of where I want to get a, even a little bit more serious than I already am. And that is, if you do not have uh, uh, capital set aside, you squeezed into a property, really consider moving that property right now, putting it back on the market, and at least taking advantage of this hot market that is happening or the tail end of it. Consider selling, consider moving, because you will, you may not weather the storm. I don't know your numbers but you may not weather the storm. If you're in that situation, I'm talking directly to you now. And then uh, again, with this more inventory on the market to come, you're gonna be battling um, newer, better, cleaner, uh, less maintenance uh, apartment units. So the the tail end of A-class units are gonna start battling the B, B plus scenarios. The tail end of B class units, B minus, are going to start battling the C, C plus, and and those, uh, you know, you're going to start to see that. So again, if you're coming in this situation on a project that you own and you are not prepared from a capital standpoint, I think you're going to be uh, in for a tougher time. How much capital? You know, at least, at least right now, I would have capital reserves at least right now at 25% of your gross income, a gross income. I know that's higher than normal. I'm just telling you with what I feel is coming. uh, I think we need to be ready. If it doesn't come, you're ready and you can deploy that money elsewhere. But at least for the near future, have that ready to go. Those are my notes. You can see my notes. I've been I've been uh, taking that, but this market's slowing down. Increase in rents are slowing down. Uh, I think we we've, we've seen it there, uh, with the exception of real estate is location specific, and some markets are doing better than others, and uh, other markets are doing worse than others, of course. But this is kind of happening from the west coast coming east on the single family house side. I'm seeing that the storm will get here to the Midwest and East Coast. But it's starting on the West Coast coming east. The last crash was interesting because it, it happened quicker, like the Lehman Brothers moment. And it happened around all coasts and moved in. This one's coming from the West and kind of moving in. And I think you're going to start to see these figures on the East Coast as well. Again, I do I know exactly this is going to happen? I don't. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know how long and I don't know how where rates are going. I know they're going up. And I also uh, know that history does not repeat itself, but it rhymes. But if you can be prepared and kind of heed my warning on this a little bit, I think you're going to be prepared for anything. And this is a great time, folks. This is when markets change. This is where investors and entrepreneurs and business owners make their mark. This is where we make our money, uh, not only in uh, as an entrepreneur and being purely as an entrepreneur, um, but also with the idea of of helping other people. That's what we do. We are helping other people. And that's why we deserve the return that we get in what we do and giving good quality rental housing, or if it's a business that you're in and giving good uh, quality service products, whatever it is that you do. So that is it. Thank you for joining me on this Real Wise podcast. It was an important one. I had a lot of fun. I'm excited, as you can tell. And uh, I'm just ready to go. I love this market when it happens like this because this is when the true professionals come out to play. Listen to, the. I guess that's the last thing I'm gonna leave you with. Listen to the people that came before us. You want a good guy to listen to? Listen to Sam Zell.
Listen to what's going on there. Listen to that guy. He's a bald guy like me, follically challenged. We might be the smartest people. I was going to say on the planet, but that's probably not true. But we're the smartest. No, I'm not going to say that either. We're just good looking. Definitely good looking. Thanks a lot for joining me on the podcast. We will see everybody next uh, time and uh, talk to everybody soon. We'll talk soon. Bye.